Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Right, a few days ago I looked at every Premier League club and found who I think their club record transfer is going to be by 2025. Now let's do the opposite. By 2025, what player is going to be your club's outgoing club record departure? Let's have a look. Arsenal, Gabriel Martinelli, 80 million. Yeah, that's pretty simple. I do think Bukiasako will leave Arsenal for about 70 million quid, but also, Gabriel Martinelli has a massive future price tag stamped all over him. You can just feel it. The lad is an 18-year-old Brazilian number 9. He's already spanked in 10 goals a season from the bench. If he keeps on with his steady progress, you're damn right some European giant is going to end up chugging half her wallet at this lad by the age of 23. And also, you've got to remember, while 80 million pounds might seem like a relatively insane amount of cash, Harry Maguire is an 80 million pound man right now. Can you imagine who's going to be moving for that much by 2025. Oh, it's a really small ball and will probably go for 50 million quid. Aston Villa, Jack Rage, 55 million. Yeah, I've already touched on this in the other video. Once James Madison predictably ends up at Old Trafford, then yeah, Leicester are gonna need a replacement. 55 million pound Jack Rage probably fits the bill. I know, to be honest, I can't see Aston Villa selling anyone for a higher figure over the next five years. Not a hope in hell. Because if by 2025 the likes of Matt Target are being tossed around for 60 million quid, I will officially give up on trying to understand this bastard sport. Bournemouth, Nathan Ake, 40 million. Remember those absolutely ludicrous rumours swirling around Caleb Wilson somehow commanding a 70 million transfer fee. Given his age, injury record, and the sheer fact that he's nothing more than a goddamn mid-table striker, that would have been absolutely ridiculous. Thankfully, I think the ship has sailed on that one now. Once Bournemouth begin to drop like a stone, tumbling through the divisions, and yes, there will be a fire sale, and 25-year-old Nathan Ake, a Dutch international linked with big money moves every single window, yeah, I'd expect Bournemouth to double their money on that 20 million pound outlay back in 2017. Brighton, Lillard, Trossard, 20 million. No, lads, all right? Lewis dunk for 50 million is never going to happen, all right? And thank Christ for that, it will be beyond laughable. Imagine having 50 million sitting in your bank. More money than most people have in their life. And choosing to spend it on a bang average 28 year old centre back with a CV consisting of three relegation battles and one England cap. It would be a disgusting act of financial recklessness. At the moment it doesn't take much to beat Brighton's record sale. They've only ever received more than four million pounds for one player and that was Leonardo Ojoa. I reckon if they were to cash in on Leonardo Trossard, a 25 year old Belgian winger, they'd probably make their money back in a 20 million pound deal to some European club. Burnley, Dwight McNeil, 35 million. Again, I touched on this in the other video. Once Wilfred Zaha leaves Crystal Palace, I would expect them to attempt to replace him with someone like Dwight McNeil. 35 million pounds should do it. Dragging him from Burnley as he completes the biggest sideways move of his life. Let's be honest, Palace aren't ever going to replace Zaha with a player of equal talent. So spending that 70 million pounds on a right back, striker and playmaker, yeah, not bad. Chelsea, Ellen Hazard, 100 million. Okay, look through this entire Chelsea squad. Do you really think any of their players will cost more than 100 million pounds? And don't you dare mention Callum hunter the doy not a sliver of a chance. I think Ellen Hazard's 100 million pound move to Real Madrid is going to stand a club record departure for quite a long time. I mean, when is Mason Mount ever going to command a nine-digit figure transfer? The only way that would happen is if the chief negotiator at the buying club just swallowed a big bag of glue. Crystal Palace, Wilfred Zaha, 70 million. Yeah, Wilfred Zaha will be off this summer. Come on, does anyone actually think he'll stay? The father probably burst into tears when his move to both Arsenal and Everton collapsed last summer. But then again, it's nearly March and Palace are just three points behind Everton and four behind Arsenal. And Palace could even afford the luxury of going nine games without a win. I do think he'll leave this summer though, probably to Everton. I could have shown they've more money than sense. And yeah, he'll wrap up a 70 million pound move. Everton, Richarlison, 90 million. Yeah, without a doubt, if you actually think Richarlison, a 22-year-old forward trying to stamp his mark on the Brazil team, if you actually think he's going to spend the rest of his career at Everton, you're having a laugh. If we're talking about making a global name for yourself, most people in Brazil will just think Everton is that guy stuffed on the left wing. Apparently Barcelona were sniffing around last month. If he keeps smashing them in for Everton and catching the eyes of bigger clubs, then yes, he has 90 million pounds at least stamped all over his face. Quite mad for a guy who once scored five goals in 40 odd games for Watford. Leicester, Harry Maguire, 80 million. Leicester fans will probably be a bit underwhelmed by this. If they were able to flog Harry Maguire for 80 million pounds, then how in a cow's left nipple are they not getting more for James Madison? Well lads, transfer negotiations aren't perfect, all right? Players can kick up a fuss, go on strike, forcing you to sell them for a fee you're not entirely happy with. For God's sake, I'd imagine the Leicester owners weren't all that pleased with trading Riyad Mahrez in for just 60 million quid. I think it'll be a similar story here. Madison will chuck his toys out the pram, forced to remove to Old Trafford. For the likes of 60 million, leaving Maguire as the record sale. Liverpool fleet continue 120 million. Yeah, I'm sorry lads, I don't think Liverpool are going to be selling anyone for over 100 million quid anytime soon. Not because they're not worth it, but why would they want to go? They're literally at the best team in world football right now. The likes of Mo Salah has been repeatedly linked with big moves to Spain, but why? Are we forgetting Real Madrid have won just four league titles in 2003? Man City have won that much since then, and they spent five years of that feeling Joey Barton and Danny Mills. Salah is not going to want out of Liverpool anytime soon, neither Sadio Mane or Virgil van Dijk. So yeah, Coutinho stands tall as a £120 million sale to Barcelona. I mean, I do think Salah will eventually leave, probably to someone like Inter Milan, but that's when he's into his 30s, alright? Right now, in the prime of his career, when he can command over £100 million quid, he's not going anywhere. Man City Raheem Sterling, 100 million. Yeah, you can smell this one. Once the dust settles from this European ban, Manchester City will be forced to sell their best players for a fraction of what they're actually worth. 
The likes of Real Madrid will smell blood. And yeah, I know Raheem Sterling is arguably worth almost double, and if you believe the papers, but I think with City forced to reconstruct their finances and with players kicking up a fuss to leave, then yeah, they'll only pocket about 100 million quid for Sterling. Only pocket 100 million pounds. Christ, I'm acting like they're flogging him for three freddos and a half-eaten sandwich. I remember when half the nation nearly spat blood out their nose when he left Liverpool for 50. Man United Paul Pogba, 83 million. Yeah, according to the papers, Man United are looking for an 83 million pound fee for Paul Pogba. But I think, considering Pogba's itching to leave, the fact he's been stuck in the treatment room this season, United will be looking to move on from this expensive headache and yeah, 83 million pounds might nowadays be seen as a pittance, but I think they'll be quite happy to get about the door. Probably in a return to Juventus. Newcastle, Sean Longstaff, 95 million. Yeah, I've touched on this in the other one. Listen, I'm probably wrong, but Manchester United Chiefs are clearly interested in Sean Longstaff. Mike Ashley drives a hard deal. If Newcastle can somehow sell him for 95 million quid, there'll be parties in the streets of Tyneside until they quickly sober up and realise they'll probably just go in Ashley's back pocket. Norwich, Todd Cantwell, 25 million. Yeah, without a doubt, the singular shiny light in Norwich's team this season is 22 year old Todd Cantwell. Surely he's going to seal a big money move to someone like Everton or Spurs in the summer. According to the media, even Liverpool are interested. I think he'll be alright. Sheffield United, Sander Burke, 25 million. Yeah, club record, 22 million pounds, Sander Burke seems a decent little midfielder. And just another quality export from Norway. Do I think he'll spend the next half decade at Bramall Lane? Nah, I very much doubt it. Before well for Sheffield United, you can be sold on for a profit in two or three years. Southampton, Virgil van Dijk, 75 million. Oh come on, when will Southampton ever have the opportunity to flog one of their players for 75 million quid? It's funny how at the time that seemed like a mental transfer fee. Now it's arguably the best money Liverpool have ever spent. I know inflation is going to make this transfer fee pale into insignificance by 2025, but still, I don't think Southampton will be selling anyone for that much anytime soon. Tottenham, Gareth Bale, 85 million. Listen lads, I know, this is underwhelming. You probably all expect Harry Kane to be in this list, but no. I'm guessing that by 2025, Kane will still be there, hoping to smash Alan Shearer's record, desperately try to win a trophy, with the club's record departure still being Gareth Bale, 12 years on from leaving. Watford, Richardson, 40 million. Yep, yeah, Richardson makes the list for a second time. Listen, Watford might cash in on the likes of Abdullah Decore or Ismail Assar, but are they going to command a bigger transfer fee than the 40 million Watford received off Everton for Richardson? Short answer, no. West Ham, Declan Rice, 40 million. Yeah, why not? Listen, I don't particularly rate Declan Rice for obvious reasons, but I do think he'll be eventually cashed in on. Like most players who impress for West Ham, I think we've all seen his loyalty is wafer thin, so do I think he'll spend over 10 years at West Ham? No. Watch a future £40 million move back to Chelsea, as that club show they've never really learned their lesson from splashing big and bang average midfielders. Wolves, Ruben Neves, 60 million. Look, Wolves are a solid club on the up, but Ruben Neves, he's not going to stay there forever, is he? Give it a couple of years and I see a big money move to someone like Inter Milan on the horizon. Alright, that's the end of the video, lads. Let me know what do you think. Have I got this all wrong? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.